Welcome everybody. Welcome back to Homestead Heart. And I'm out in the garden today doing a little bit of harvesting. But I started looking over the garden and realized like this has literally become a garden jungle, right? But what really caught my eye was how much all of the herbs have grown. It's like you're around them, right? And because I'm out here every day, I don't pay as close attention, I guess, <laughs> because I turned around and I'm like, oh, when did that happen? <laughs> I'm going to show you all just how the herbs have grown and how beautiful they are looking. I've already harvested a lot of the basil that I have, but there are some things that I haven't even touched, like the mint. I planted the mint so that the mint, we just wanted access to mint whenever we wanted to have access to mint. And we wanted it to be um, available to us almost like in the entire seasons, right? Because it'll stay until like a frost or something hit it. it. You know, it might die back, but it won't be dead. You know, the roots are still continue to grow. Mint lemon balm all of those herbs are very beneficial herbs to your health right they do have significant health benefits which is why we planted them in the raised beds because we wanted to have an herb that would come back season after season now with that being said you really want to try to harvest your mint before it starts flowering because you don't want those seeds going everywhere, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> I have some lemon mint here. And this lemon mint, I haven't harvested it at all. At all. Come on, Tony. I haven't harvested it at all. But the bees are loving these flowers. So I'm gonna just show you all the herb garden and then I'm going to show you how beautiful this lemon mint is looking. And the bees absolutely adore it. Y'all, let me show you. Y'all, look at this lemon mint. And look at these beautiful flowers. These beautiful, beautiful flowers as this mint is going to seed. But look at our pollinators. Look at how our pollinators are in love. Just in love. They're everywhere in here, y'all. They're all up through this plant. Just look at them. They're everywhere in here. Right? Just look. This is absolutely beautiful. Now, will this come back to bite me? <laughs> Because I got a feeling mint is going to be all down here, all on the ground. And that's all it takes for this stuff to start running wild and going crazy, right? That's all it takes. Just a chance. And I have given it a great chance to spread its wings and fly. But just look at all the pollinators in here. I don't know if y'all can see them all. Just look at them. Just look at there. The bumble. Look like half the bumble family up in this joker. Just look at them. They're everywhere. They are loving it. Look at that, y'all. Isn't that just beautiful this cloudy morning? This cloudy Sunday morning. It's about 9 a.m. And it is absolutely a beautiful sight to see all of these beautiful pollinators here in the garden enjoying the flowers from the lemon mint. Look at that. Hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Now, let's keep going. Oh, by the way, what you see right next to the lemon mint is that moringa tree, right? It's one of our moringas. Out of all of the moringa that we planted, only three of them actually made it this far. Okay. Some of the seeds didn't germinate. Some of them died when we had that cold snap. And these three, I had three that made it through. So now let's come on over here. I'm going to show you this. This right here, you all, 
is this was our basil i cut the basil back all right i've already harvested a lot but as you can see it's actually coming back again <laughs> so i might get a second a good second harvest from this but look at this this is more of our mint right here now if i'm not mistaken let me see if i can get in here this is the spearmint whoops all right yeah so this is the spearmint right here and that spearmint is going all the way around back of this other moringa plant moringa tree right yeah more basil now for some reason the sage very slow at taking off right now this this year as you can see i got some grass going up through here i'm gonna have to get in there and get that out but this sage is slow at growing yeah it's very slow but now don't let that fool you because i don't believe next season i'll be able to plant sage in this little four by four bed right here i don't believe i'll be able to plant basil i mean in this bed because the sage will have taken over this entire four by four bed so while it's starting off real slow this sage will inhabit the entire bed so just like mint when you plant sage make sure make sure wherever you plant it you're happy with it because it's going to stay there and it's only going to get bigger and bigger and spread more and more okay all right now let's go on we got to tackle this today y'all remember that that's those burgerkins. Look at how it done crossed over. It's going over to the second bed, all the way over to the third bed. Look at there. Those burgerkins. I got to harvest those this morning. And I'm going to show y'all how I prepare those as well. Okay? All right, y'all. Now, what is all of this? All of this is my peppermint plant. Look at there. Just look at the size of this. Just look at this, y'all. Look at that. All peppermint. I, I need to bag up so you can see the whole plant. Look at there. Peppermint. Now down there was just a celery plant that I had, and I just put it in the ground, and it's growing back already. And it's hot. I don't even know why that's growing, but it is. But look at this. Just look at that beautiful peppermint plant that's also starting to flower. Just look at this. That beautiful? It's starting to flower as well. So I know I got to do something about this. I know I need to start harvesting this. But I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. All right, let's keep going. Now, I'm over here with the deal. As you can see, the deal has even started to lay down. It started to lay itself down. But y'all, look at him. Look at him. Y'all see him? What is his plans for my garden? What is his plan for my garden? I mean, now look. Beautiful caterpillar, right? Isn't he just gorgeous? Isn't he beautiful? Just look at him. Isn't he beautiful? He beautiful. But he will devastate your crops. So he got to go. <laughs> he got to go. To the chickens. All right, now, a lot of you have asked, well, what has happened to the turmeric and the ginger that you planted? Well, here it is. Here's the ginger bed right here. Remember all that ginger I planted, y'all? Between Grizzly and Tamu. Y'all, they dug up my beds so many times. I don't know what the attraction was to these two beds right here. But they dug them up so many times. I'm surprised to have any ginger coming up. Yes, I got to get in here and weed this out. I got to pull all the grass out. But I have a few ginger plants coming. Look at there. Look at here. Now, this is just grass right here. But just look at this. A few ginger plants coming. Just a few, not a lot. When you think about all that I planted, yeah, I only have a few that have come up. Oh, man, I really need to weed this bed. And you probably can't even see the actual ginger uh, plant itself because of all of the grass. But 
that's what this is. This is the ginger right here. And thanks to Grizz and Moo, I don't think I'll be getting any more, but we'll see. Okay. Now, right next to it, another bed that I need to weed. But remember that sugar cane that I purchased online that I planted in this bed? None of it came up. Do you know what this one is? This is the one that Lead Farmer sent us, right? And I had to take it out of the other bed because, again, Grizz and Moo dug it up. It was sitting on top of the bed. And I put it over here. And as you can see, look at how big the sugar cane has gotten. Just look at it. It's growing pretty good. It's growing pretty good. Now, these things here, y'all, y'all got to be careful. This stuff here is sharp. Man, it's like real sharp. Yeah, be careful. I, I think this stuff here will like really cut you good. So you got to be careful with dealing with that sugar cane. Okay. Now you all for the joy of this bed here. Right here is my turmeric. Look at this bed. Ooh. Look at that bed y'all. Look at all of this turmeric that has grown up here. Just look at this. I have turmeric plants everywhere. And I believe my ginger would have been this beautiful had not Grizzly and Tamu actually dug up the bed three, four times, right? But just look at this. Isn't that beautiful? All of that turmeric that is growing underneath here. Just look. I am so pleased with this bed, y'all. I really am. Just look at that. All right, y'all, now I'm over here by my corn. It's time for me to harvest this corn. Remember the corn that we planted with the Kentucky Wonder pole beans in the raised beds? Well, y'all, it's time to harvest them. We planted these so late, but look, they're ready. They're small. Ugh. Very small. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna open this one up. But it's ready because look, my tassels are all done for. I didn't even fertilize this bed. I mean, I did initially, but afterwards, I never came back over here to do anything to this bed. I didn't feed it at all. So I guess I didn't think that I would get any corn, so I didn't even bother with it. I just kind of let it go to do what it was gonna do. But we'll see, right? But let's look at this final herb uh, garden bed right here. The final herb garden bed that is like, has a jungle for a background. <laughs> All right, y'all. So in this bed is thyme and lavender. Now the thyme is growing rather slowly. I think once it cools down a bit more, it'll probably grow a lot faster. But I had three plants, actually four. I don't know what happened to the fourth one. It was back there and it's gone. But I had this one and it's growing very slow as you can see. So is this one. But this one is coming along. This is all German thyme right here. Oh man, it smells good. I'm excited to cook with that herb, y'all. Y'all don't know how excited I am to cook with it. Now, and I do have lavender here in this bed. And I gotta tell you, if you've never grown lavender before, y'all, just for the sheer smell alone, grow it, okay? Put it in a container, if you will. A nice big container, you know, like one of those um, one of those uh, laundry tubs that I showed you that I put my trees in. You can put this in that container, and it will grow and get so large, and you will be able to harvest from this season after season, right? Look at that. Man, that smells so good. Not to mention the different things you can make with this. We're not going to even talk about the soaps that you can use to make your lavender with. And actually just take some of this and put it in an oil burner and put it in your house. And you're talking about fragrant. Your house will smell lavenderish, Right? Lavenderish. <laughs> all right. Let's look at the other mint that I have. But before I do, look at all those eggplant. I need to come out here and harvest the eggplant is so heavy on this plant here. 
it's bowing over, right? Look at that. I need to come and get this eggplant, y'all. I have eggplant everywhere, all the way down. I need to come and get this eggplant, but not before I pick up some mozzarella cheese <laughs> to make me an eggplant parm. I'm going to make a lot of it, too. I'm going to put it in the freezer. Yes, I am. All right, y'all. Y'all see that jungle back there? Don't let it fool you. It's got some stuff growing in it. <laughs> it looked like a bunch of weeds and grass. But that's a bunch of food up in there. That's some food up in there. <laughs> All right, y'all, look. Oh, right here. Look at this chamomile. Look at this chamomile. You talking about making some chamomile tea. Y'all. Look if you look if you don't have a book on herbs, get you a book on herbs and look up at look up the benefits of different herbs so that when you plant them, you'll know the benefits. I am not an herbologist, but I am learning so much about herbs, and I'm just planting herbs. I'm even planting the herbs that I don't know what they for yet. <laughs> I'm planting them because I know they're beneficial, right? So I'm planting them anyway, you know. But look right here. Now y'all know this is another one of my uh no this right here is um this is my lemon balm right here right yeah this is the lemon balm not the lemon mint yeah i think i've already showed you the lemon mint let me see yeah yeah this lemon man <laughs> oh man yeah that's the lemon balm <laughs> smell good Woo! Man, I t look, look, you can have lemon mint, lemon balm. Remember now, the bees are in the lemon mint, okay? But this is the lemon balm. The lemon balm is nothing like the lemon mint. The lemon mint, it, it, you know, it's, it's very fragrant. It is, but it doesn't compare to the fragrance of the lemon balm, right? Man, man. Yeah, and I am going to get in here and harvest this. And when I harvest these herbs and I start to put them away, I'm going to show you then and explain to you then what I'm going to do with it, how I'm going to store it, and the benefits of these herbs. But I'm just showing you the herb garden, how beautiful the herb garden is coming along, even though I haven't done much to it, right? And right here with it, mm-hmm. I smell the moringa tree right there. Yeah, that's the other moringa. So I have three moringa trees out here. I'm gonna let this tree get about five feet tall. All right. Now, from my understanding, once it gets a certain height, I think some people say in a container, maybe three, four feet, then they cut off that lead stem, right? And then they allow the moringa tree to bush out to get more bushier and more full of leaves. So I've decided to let mine get about five feet tall and then I'll cut off that lead, okay? And I'm calling it a lead. I don't know if that's what they call it or not, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut off that center stalk and then it'll force the tree to push out more leafy growth, which is what we want from the Moringa, okay? All right. Now, we talked about the coneflower, uh, the chamomile, and there is another variety of chamomile that I do hope to grow next season. Remember, I was turning these raised beds into our herb garden beds, okay? And that way, for the perennials that like to spread, I can have better control, hopefully, of these herbs. Now, look, this is another mint. This is that spearmint, y'all. Look at there. Oh, yeah, that smells good. This is spearmint. Y'all know mint runs like wildfire. This is spearmint. And in, in comparison to the lemon mint, it's not, it's not growing as fast. But you can see how it's already taking over this bed. And I don't remember if I put one plant or two in the center of this bed. I think it could have been two, but I don't really know. And it's hard to see in here. It might have just been the one plant. It looks like it was just one plant. Yeah, it looks like it was just one plant of spearmint that I put in this bed. And just look at how much it has bushed out already, right? 
So I'm so excited about our herbs. Yes, I am. Now, I know this is not an herb, but I'm still excited about growing. You can see some of these plant uh, uh, stalks are beginning to die back. This is all right here. All of this to right here is all our Jerusalem artichokes, sun chokes, another perennial, right? Another perennial. And it is so beneficial. This is an excellent, excellent root crop for those who are diabetic. All right. Excellent. It helps to control, I believe, insulin levels for those who are diabetic from what I read. And I haven't read it in a long time. So those of you who know and eat it, you can, you know, correct me in the comment section below if I'm not correct on that. But it's another alternative to eating potatoes like those you know anything that's starchy it's another alternative to that on the other side <laughs> to eating this is that it produces a lot of flatulence <laughs> it's very gassy okay yeah they have another name from Jerusalem artichokes. I'm not gonna say it, but they have another one. <laughs> Eat it at your own risk. <laughs> yeah. Now there's a way that I was uh, researching several months ago, probably a year ago, about a person who cooked, they knew how to fix it so that it wasn't as gassy. Yeah, they knew how to fix it so that it wasn't as gassy. And I'll have to research that again because I forgot. But in any case, you all, up under this soil here, I don't know how many I have under there. I'm pretty sure I got a lot. And once I start harvesting these, I can harvest as many as I want. Or I can leave them under the dirt. The only thing they're going to do is grow again next season and that one artichoke will begin to produce more and more and more. Some of these are beginning to die back. Look at there. They're beginning to die back. And once they die completely, then it'll be time to harvest as many of the artichokes as I see fit. I can harvest them as I want them to, right? So if I want to have Jerusalem artichokes for dinner, then I can just come out and harvest what I want. I don't have to harvest the entire bed if I don't want to. I can leave them. They will overwinter just fine in this bed. That's another beautiful benefit to this perennial is that it's constant food, right? It's constant food. Constant food. Yeah. The benefit of perennial crops, you all. To me, you just can't beat it. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for this morning's video. I just wanted to take y'all along with me and show you all how well the herb garden is doing, how well the Jerusalem artichokes are doing, these perennial crops are doing absolutely wonderful, you all. Now, <laughs> one thing I'll say before I end this video, if you all possibly can, do your best to grow your own herbs. Miss Cheryl over at Cheryl's Organic Food Forest, she knows so much. Go to her channel. If you haven't subscribed, go and support her channel. She does so much in the way of growing her food forest, but she could tell you about these herbs, you all. She can tell you about these herbs and the benefits of them as well in, a, in her videos. And also buy yourself a good book on herbs, y'all. We gotta learn how to grow our own medicine this is like having a medicine cabinet in your backyard on your farm on your patio or your balcony you can grow your own medicines right yes you can you can grow what you need to keep yourself healthy and to also heal yourself from a lot of ailments right maybe not everything but a lot of things, okay? So y'all, that's gonna do it. Don't just grow your groceries, grow your medicine. Grow your medicine cabinet as well, all right? 
All right, y'all, that's going to do it. Thank y'all so much for joining me this morning. If you haven't done so, give the, already give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video we upload to our channel. Thank y'all for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. I'm going to see y'all in the next video.